So we would like to start with something that may not concern you directly, <laughs> but I'm sure it, it worries you. I'm talking about it, this much publicized case of hit and run <laughs> case against uh, the the heir uh, an heir to the Red Bull business empire. Right. What does this tell you? I mean, despite the overwhelming evidence against him and that he was let off the hook, so the, this uh, certainly we have seen the public outrage over this decision by yep. the public prosecutor. Well, I don't think I need to add to that outrage. <laughs> um, but we, uh, the party, Park Gwa, mm. uh, we did make a statement about this very recently, uh, about potential reform mm. that we think uh, needs to be made uh, to the um, uh, judicial process, uh, especially to the appeal process, because um, in this current constitution, <clears throat> uh, the, the, the right to appeal the decision um, by the Attorney General uh, is with the police, mm -hmm. which I don't think makes sense because the police was part of that process in the, in the first place. Uh, whereas previously, in the previous constitution, uh, this right uh, was with the provincial governors. Mm -hmm. And I think that the least that should be done okay. um, is that uh, the, the, the final appeal um, or the final decision mm -hmm. uh, should be made uh, by the provincial uh, governor. Uh, at least what that means is that it's a different department, yeah, um, yeah. and uh, and hopefully uh, that increases uh, governance yeah, and yeah. Um, and best practice. It provides uh, some kind of more check and balance. Correct, and, yeah. and at best in the future, uh, because we also propose at mm. Pakla that um, provincial governors are eventually elected. Mm. Um, at, at best, it means that uh, a representative that was elected by the public. Uh, can have a say okay. uh, mm -hmm. and help to provide that that check and balance. Mm -hmm. right. And with the political atmosphere in Thailand, you must have seen how students, young people, are really active yeah. and coming out to protest. Yeah. So, what yeah. what do you see the role of young people well, I think in politics? I think it's it's good to see them active. I mean, prior to this, you know, we were all saying uh, that this generation is the so-called generation me, you know, just. <laughs> taking selfies and, and not showing interest to the world, where they're proving mm -hmm. us wrong, um, which I, I think is positive. Uh, we've been very, very uh, keen to say, look, um, you know, within the law, uh, they definitely have the right to express their opinion. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, it's been a concern um, that that's been, uh, I think, overstepping the line, especially mm -hmm. with regards to uh, the uh, the monarchy as an institution, and I think uh, the students need to to be sensible about that and to be more careful about that. Mm. Um, we're worried that if they proceed that way, uh, this could all end, end badly, um, and that uh, it, it may even lead to uh, violence and, and a kind of conflict mm. that we don't want to see uh, in in this society. So I think you know they should they should be careful uh, mm. on, on on that issue. In particular, but broadly speaking, um, you know, kids are showing different ways of, uh, uh, of displaying uh, that their thoughts and their opinions. Uh, at Pakla, over the past uh, ten days, we've, we've had a very intensive uh, involvement with with youth through our youth program, Konjen Gra, which is what we call it. Um, we, we we there were about fifty odd kids who participated uh, in this. Um, we gave them tools mm. uh, we believe they need um, for the 21st century, <laughs> uh, including you know, a very successful e-commerce day where mm -hmm. we had experts and professionals come to help uh, introduce them to uh, the, the skills of, of, of uh, selling and buying um, mm -hmm. uh, through e-commerce. Uh, and then we had a very interesting 24-hour uh, policy hackathon uh, mm -hmm. where uh, these kids individually uh, indicated what they thought that pain point was right. um, for, uh, from, from their perspective regarding Thailand, Thai society. Um, and then they themselves had a vote uh, to, to pair the 53 ideas uh, down to uh, the final six. And then had a, an overnight sort of mm. a hackathon um, amongst themselves to uh, define what the problem is, uh, propose potential solution, um, and then to, uh, to, to um, uh, basically e ex express uh, their suggestions to us as, as a party. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. So it's, it's 
for me, it's a very constructive way of, of, in, of engagement. Um, I also believe, in any case, that uh, political parties uh, nowadays um, shouldn't serve uh, any, any particular age group, but, mm -hmm. but needs to, to work uh, with all age groups equally. Mm -hmm. um, so from that perspective, I think what we learned, uh, we meaning those of us who are members of Gen X or, in the case of myself, a baby boomer, uh, what, what we learned was, um, in fact, uh, kids often come up with the best ideas. Mm -hmm. And I think the reason why they do, or the reason why they can, is because they, they're not constrained as we are by, uh, by, uh, by barriers um, and through experience of, of, of uh, how difficult uh, it might be to, to, to resolve these issues. Mm -hmm. And once you're not bound by that, uh, you, you're, you're more free to suggest um, and use, to use your imagination mm -hmm. uh, and, and to, to express uh, what can often be real pains that, that basically haven't been addressed. Where we come in, basically, is to use our experience uh, to, to help guide them uh, and, uh, as much as we can uh, in, in order to, to reach a practicable solution. Um, mm -hmm to try to resolve those problems. So it's, it was a very interesting uh, process and a, mm. and a great yeah, but of, uh, 10 with, days for yeah. all of us. Yeah, but within this present mm. political and social context, as far as you can, can see, what are these people, young people, aspirations and what kind of society that they want to see in the country? Yeah, they, I think they, they mm. want to see a, a, a more uh, modern society. Mm. Mm. Um, and I think captured within that term modern means of all kinds of things like mm democratic, uh, transparent, uh, equal, uh, clean in, in terms of um, environment and, and quality of life. Uh, I think it encapsulates all those things. And, and I think that's a great aspiration to have. Uh, I think, frankly speaking, uh, Thailand's fallen behind uh, over the past decade or so. Um, you know, whether it's in terms of application of use of technology or or even in terms of mm. uh, uh, de um, democratic development. Mm. So that, that's a lot that needs to be done. Yeah. Um, and I think the kids are giving us a very <laughs> clean and clear statement um, yeah, of what they want to see. And what do you think they see in you? <laughs> uh, some old guy. You know, <laughs> beside that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I hopefully, uh, they, they, they see me as uh, somebody who is uh, genuinely open-minded. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and generally, genuinely wants to hear what they have to say and, mm -hmm. and, and uh, listen to any advice that they, they might have. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that's, if they see me that way, I think I'm, okay. I'm, I'm doing my job properly. You said there was exchange between the, the meeting between the young generation who, who participate in, yeah. <coughs> in Konjen Kla. You also had former prime minister, we Anand Panyarachun. So what, what's the exchange between well, like you, older generation you, and younger ones. You had the bridge, right? There, uh, <laughs> there was a, a question from from uh, from, from a young Konjen uh, I think she was about, I'm not sure, 19, maybe 20. She she got up to ask the final question, and before she asked the question, uh, she said, uh, you know, Kunanan, um, I really like your vibe. Literally, she used that word, mm. and she spoke in Thai, but the the word vibe was was mm. was, was in English, which I thought. You know, wow. that, was, that was cool. It's very um, cool, yes. <laughs> and and Kunanan thought the same. Mm -hmm. um, so I think there was basically great chemistry um, mm -hmm. that was going on between the kids, uh, my generation who were, uh, and, and Gen Xers who were organizing the event, mm -hmm. and Kunanan who was, you know, he's 88 this week, um, still as sharp as a razor, mm -hmm. um, and, but obviously from, from a different generation. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and what was going on, that vibe uh, mm -hmm. in, in that big room, I, I think was was, uh, was was something that very spe very special for for all of us that was there, mm -hmm. and um, and I think it was a perfect example of of all generations sort of working together uh, for the same goal, maybe through different paths, but uh, towards the same goal of uh, of, a, of a better society. Mm -hmm. um, I was actually surprised also that when he, when I um, led on, we we, tried, we kept it a secret for for a while that Kunana was going to come on the final mm -hmm. day. Um, but when I did let on to them a couple of days before, I was very pleasantly surprised how 
uh, clearly and obviously very excited they were um, mm -hmm. of the prospect because, frankly, I wasn't sure whether they even knew who he was, you know. <laughs> yeah. um, and, uh, and they, you know, they, they then went away and oh, did yeah. some, some more homework, oh, okay. so they knew what to expect. Um, they treated him, they mm. called him P, but they, oh, uh. but, 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 uh, <laughs> but, and then would, and then would be frightened. Yeah, would but, be uh, but they, they treated him with, with the level of respect that, you know, we would, we, we would hope mm. uh, that, uh, that, that the young would Hello. of somebody who is so, so uh, esteemed. Yeah. Um, but, you know, it was, it was great. And, yeah. and mm. you know, hats off also to Kunanan yeah. for, yeah. for uh, sparing his time. Okay. So yeah. one more question about uh, the new mm. generation of people, especially the student activists who yeah. have been wearing around the country. The Prime Minister said today that he, was, he planned to sit down for a dialogue with Good. these people. Good. So what would be your suggestion to the Prime Minister so that he, the country can really harness I mean, the, the vibrancies of the, the young people? Well, he should. I, 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 first, first of all, I'm quite glad that mm. there is um, mm. uh, a... a a committee that was set up yeah. in Parliament mm. uh, that will allow mm. the young to uh, voice their opinion to members of Parliament. Yeah. Uh, I hope they get a chance to do that in the, in the big hall, mm. um, in, in front of all members, rather than just the uh, mm. uh, ad hoc committee members. Um, I think Kun I, I, you know, if, if he's sincere yeah. in, in wanting to listen, that can only be good news. Um, but listen, let's, let's really listen. Mm. Um, and, and don't just... Don't, don't have your team uh, screen mm. uh, who it is that gets to yeah. come in to see you. Um, you know, uh, you, you can see who's voicing dissent and mm. who's unhappy. Invite them. Uh, bring them over. Mm. I, I think, you know, that's, that's what uh, well, parliament uh, should mean, but, mm. but also that, that dialogue between, between the leader uh, and a very important segment mm. of uh, of uh, the people who he, you know, he he's mandated to govern. That dialogue is, is very important, mm -hmm. and um, the more that there is, uh, the, the the bigger the gap is, or the bigger at least the perceived gap is mm -hmm. right, between the, the young and the powerful, uh, the more frustrated the young will yeah. feel, and I I don't think that's good for anybody. And. From the capacity of former finance minister, right. <laughs> how do you see the direction of economy, Thai economy right now with the COVID-19? Well, it's, it's very worrisome mm. um, because it's, it's really going nowhere. I mean, it's gone down and uh, it's obviously going to show some improvement because, you know, we're, we're from complete lockdown, now we have at least domestic economic activity. So if you go out on the street, it looks normal. Um, mm. But, uh, but we're, we're not going to be anywhere near where we were uh, until we're able to open our borders. Yeah. Um, we are, uh, and also until the economies of our trading partners uh, improve. And mm. they're a long way uh, away from, from that um, with, with, with the risk of, uh, of a genuine second wave mm. uh, in terms of uh, the spreading of COVID. Mm. So I think we're going to struggle uh, for some time, which is why... Um, I uh, suggested 10 points um, to the government um, at, you know, at this very important time when they are reshuffling the cabinet. Um, it's, when you reshuffle the cabinet, it's, it's like having a fresh start. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, maybe whether the, the, the new people coming in were as good or better than the old one, you know, let's not get into that. Uh, but at least it's a fresh start for the government as a whole. Um, and, and that allows them to, I think, uh, take a fresh look mm -hmm. at some of the uh, things they've been doing, um, which I, I feel may not have worked. Um, for example, I don't think they've, they've uh, taken sufficient care uh, of uh, SMEs and of the very small uh, tradespeople. Mm -hmm. So you know, that covers, what, uh, two or three million in, yes. in, in total. Uh, none really of the economic policies that they've come up with so far um, has provided the direct benefits that these guys need. Um, frankly, they have very poor access to financial resources, um, very low levels of, uh, of savings to begin with. Mm -hmm. um, and they, they, I'm not gonna say they're gonna struggle. They have been struggling. Some of them have already failed to survive. And um, uh, the longer this goes on, 
the harder it will be uh, to uh, you know, restart the, the engine. So you've got to keep them alive. Um, and you can only do that by, by uh, directly injecting um, the cash that the government has uh, into their pockets. Mm -hmm. So for example, um, the, the soft loan uh, policy, clearly that hasn't worked. Um, the 500 billion soft loan through uh, that the Bank of Thailand has, yeah. Yeah. Uh, has uh, issued. It hasn't worked because you know, only a very small percentage of it has been disbursed uh, to the SMEs, and even then, to the bigger SMEs, not to the small guys who really need it. So we've got to take a fresh look at that. Why, don't, why not have a look at the UK model, mm. uh, whereby they also had problems with their first uh, batch of uh, soft loan, mm. um, to the extent whereby uh, the government had to change the condition and basically provided 100% guarantee um, to the banks, and all of a sudden, there was huge take up um, and, and huge disbursement mm -hmm. of the loan. And I think that's the kind of uh, courageous step uh, that the government might need to, to consider. Mm -hmm. um, and that's aside from issues related to uh, uh, job losses. Um, what, how, do we, how do we help get people employed? Uh, and again, I think direct measures are needed mm -hmm. to do that. Um, also, the big issue for us, of course, is, is, is that we very depend on tourism. And, mm, right. and that's not going to improve in a hurry. Yeah. But quite recently, um, the, uh, the GLA team, uh, economic team, working together with our, the, the GLA team in Phuket, uh, came up with um, uh, policy suggestions that we gave to the Prime Minister. Mm. Um, and we wanted to for the, for the government to consider uh, specific policies to make Thailand, to sell the concept of working from Thailand, okay? And, and I think, you know, Thailand is seen by the, the whole world, uh, mm. quite rightly, as a, almost a safe haven from COVID. Uh, yeah. We've done extremely well in that. And um, Phuket r remains uh, 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 an island, a paradise island um, in, in, in the mind of travelers. So make it easier for them to come, um, test them for COVID, quarantine them in Phuket um, for the required number of days, let's say 14, um, and, uh, and then allow them long stay working visas, one year, two years, whatever, um, so, so that you know, they, can, they can base themselves in Phuket or elsewhere in Thailand once they've passed the quarantine period. I think there'll be a lot of professionals uh, who, are mobile um, in, in the ability to pick where they do their work from. Mm. Who, would, who would love to be able to have the opportunity to come to do that in Thailand? Cost of living is lower, mm -hmm. but climate's great. Um, and as I said, you know, great healthcare and currently free of COVID. Yeah. So. So. You're talking about a new, a new <laughs> rethink of uh, just yeah, the way I, that we should handle that's, tourism. That's, that's right. right. And, and you may ask, you know, of all the things I've talked about, where the money comes from, yeah. but one of the Ten points that I propose yeah. to the government is: Come on, let's completely relook at how we're going to be spending those 400 billion of, of loans mm -hmm. that you're going to be uh, making. You know, currently um, the NESDB is proposing uh, that the 400 billion is used for projects that mm -hmm. are very old, normal projects, mm -hmm. yeah. um, usually funded through the budget. Um, it's not appropriate for a special decree yeah, uh, yeah. loan in an emergency. Mm -hmm. That 400 billion uh, should be used to, to make direct payments, as I mentioned mm -hmm. earlier, uh, to those who are currently suffering um, mm -hmm. from COVID. Uh, you know, I think more uh, treat it as an emergency mm -hmm. uh, source of funding and, mm -hmm. and use it accordingly. Yeah. I'm sure the new finance minister, whoever he is, is working hard on his homework now, right? Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> and, and you were in, in his, uh, this seat before, right? Mm. As former <clears throat> finance minister. So what do you think would be the biggest challenge for the incoming finance minister? Um, well, <clears throat> obviously the, the state of the economics. Mm. At least he has the tools. Mm. Um, same with me. When I came in 10 years ago um, into the, uh, the hamburger crisis, yeah. um, the crisis was, 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 was deep. Um, but... Uh, 
but I also had the tools. Mm. Uh, and when I say the tools, I mean um, I had physical space. Mm. Uh, that, that, that is a technical term um, that refers to the ability for the government to borrow money, um, to, to use to help us mm. get out of trouble. Uh, Thailand, even today, has relatively low debt to GDP mm. level. Um, so the ammunition is there. Uh, the, the key is, is using it properly, uh, directing it uh, correctly at the problem, mm -hmm. um, and, and making you know, every part uh, sort of, um, what, you, what, what, what am I trying to say? Make it count, mm -hmm. make every part count. Yeah. 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 So uh, in time of crisis like this, do you think the finance ministers will still have the loudest voice in the room? Oh, uh, no. <laughs> I mean, let's, let's face it, the loudest not voice... In Thailand, not in Thailand. No, 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 no. I mean, um, the loudest voice in, in any government is the prime minister. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, uh, the but prime he has to listen to the prime minister when it comes to physical policy, right? Absolutely. Yeah, and yeah. He, sh he should listen to all his ministers. <laughs> but um, but with, when it comes to economic mm. policies, mm. Uh, he should definitely listen to the mm. finance minister. We also have a new incoming uh, governor of the Bank of Thailand. Yeah, uh, yeah. So um, very able... Mm. I, I call him young man because I've known him for a long time. Um, but he's not that young anymore, uh, <laughs> but, but certainly very capable. And um, so there's a new team in town. Uh, let's see what fresh ideas they, they have. Mm -hmm. and, uh, uh, and as I said, they do have ammunition, mm -hmm. especially the finance minister. I, I think the governor has a harder task uh, mm -hmm. because I think monetary policy in, in, in current climate of near zero yes. interest rates mm. is, is very challenging. So you mean we still have the space, still have the ammunition? We and, do, but I'm very worried about how it's used. Yeah, the determination and the right direction. To, yeah. Co correct. And mm. because, you know, when you're using 400 billion yeah. to build roads and whatever kind of projects that they're proposing, first of all, um, the money is not going to where, yeah. uh, where it's really needed. It's not going to those who are suffering. Mm. Secondly, it takes a long time for these projects to, uh, to, to go through you know, the, the bureauc bureaucratic process. Therefore, it takes a long time for the money to be disbursed mm. into the system. What we're really looking for is the entire one trillion, not just that 400 billion, mm. into the economy this year, almost, mm. in, in fact, you know, right now. Mm. But it's not gonna happen if you use it that way, yeah. which is why I think it's very important that mm. the government uh, completely um, uh, Relook and uh, take a fresh look at and that, at how this money yes. is going to be used. What what can we do I mean, to prevent politicians from coming into the way of the new finance minister, or the new economic team, in trying to <coughs> revitalize the economy using this uh, stimulus package? Because there are fears that uh, with this current reshuffle, yeah. there will be <coughs> politicians I mean, wanting to have to be very frank to have a cut in whatever that will be spent, right? So I'm sure. Learning from your experience, how, how do you handle this kind of uh, interference? Uh, I had uh, a very strong uh, mandate uh, from my boss, the Prime Minister, Buna and, um, and his direct help as well, also mm -hmm. from the Deputy Prime Minister at the time, Kun uh, Sak, so uh, as, a, as a team, we, we knew, we understood the political challenges, mm -hmm. I mean, we're all politicians. And, um, uh, but we also understood what needed to be done. Uh, and and that, that strong support uh, mm. made, it, made it easier. Mm. Uh, frankly speaking, I'm not sure whether the uh, new finance minister is going to receive that same support. Um, and also the fact that he's coming in fresh, mm. not having ever been exposed to uh, politics um, mm. or even into how the function how, how the government functions, mm -hmm. how parliament functions. I, I think he's got, he, I, hope, I, I don't know him very well, but uh, I'm sure he's able, um, but he's got a, a lot to pick up uh, in a very short space of time. There's really not going to be much of a honeymoon period, uh, given the level of crisis that the people are facing at the moment. I'm sure you can expect a call from him soon. <laughs> I'm, sure, <laughs> I'm sure he's not coming. He's not yeah. coming. Yeah.